Good afternoon, class. Today we're going to discuss Chapter 1, Financial Accounting and Accounting Standards, and we're going to discuss how they relate to financial reporting, standard setting, general accepted accounting principles, and international accounting standards. So learning objective one, understand the financial reporting environment. So essential characteristics of accounting are the identification, measurement, and communication of financial information about economic entities to interested parties. Major branches of accounting. And so financial accounting is a process that culminates in the preparation of financial reports on the enterprise for use by both internal and external parties. Managerial accounting is a process of identifying and measuring, analyzing, and communicating financial information needed by management to plan, control, and evaluate a company's operations. And so financial accounting and managerial accounting are two of the four largest branches of the accounting discipline, which include tax accounting and auditing. Financial accounting is designed for external users, is highly regulated, and must follow GAAP. Managerial accounting, on the other hand, is designed for internal users, is very detail-specific for organizations, and is not necessarily required to follow GAAP. This chapter will focus on um, financial accounting. And so here we have an illustration of the financial reporting environment. You have your economic entity, uh, which is your financial with your financial information. It's going to be provided by the accountants in the form of financial statements. Um, the balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows, statement of owners or stockholders' equity, and any note disclosures under uh, GAAP. And then it can also be presented in other formats, such as the president's letter, a prospectus, reports filed with the government, news releases, forecasts, and environmental impact statements. So again, economic information is compiled into financial statements and then provided in additional formats. So accounting and capital allocations. So resources are limited. So efficient uses of resources often determine whether a business thrives and it is essential to a healthy economy. So here the capital allocation process illustration shows you have financial reporting, then the users, and then their capital allocation. So financial reporting, the financial information a company provides to help users with capital allocation decisions about the company. The users, um, present and potential, their investors and creditors, and they use financial reports to make their capital allocation decisions. And then the capital allocation is a process of determining how and at what cost money is allocated among competing interests. So objectives of financial reporting, to provide for financial information about the reporting entity that is useful to present and potential equity investors, lenders, and other creditors, and making decisions in their capacity as capital providers. So the general purpose of financial statements are to provide financial reporting information to a wide variety of users to provide the most useful information as possible at the least cost. And so equity investors and creditors, um, they're both they both use the financial information, but investors are the primary user group. Entity perspective, companies are viewed as separate and distinct from their owners. In decision usefulness, investors are interested in assessing the company's ability to generate a net cash flow and management's ability to protect and enhance the capital um, provider's investment. So here we have an illustration of financial information that is needed and is typically reported using financial statements, and these statements are developed using GAAP. So learning objective two is identify the major policy setting bodies and their roles in the standard setting process. And so the parties involved in standard setting, there are three organizations, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, AICPA, and the Financial Accounting Standards Board, FASB. And so the Security Exchange Commission derives a party from the Securities Act of 1933 and 1934. And they were established by the federal government to oversee accounting and reporting for public companies. And so they, they have typically encouraged private standard setting 
by the body such as the AICPA and the FSB. The SEC provides oversight and enforcement authority, and they require public companies to adhere to GAAP. And so the SEC was established to help develop and standardize financial reporting. The SEC has deferred the majority of this responsibility to FASB and only interjecting when needed. And so, again, the SEC was established after the economic uh, crash of the Depression um, in order to standardize financial reporting and regulate public counties. The American Institute of Certified Public Accountants it's a national professional organization, and it established the following, the Committee on Accounting Procedures and the Accounting Principles Board. And so the Committee on Accounting Procedures was established in 1939, and it ran until 1959. It issued 51 accounting research bulletins, which were called ARBs, and it focused on a problem-by-problem -problem approach, which failed. The Accounting Principles Board followed them from 1959 to 1973, and they issued accounting principal board opinions, which was called APBOs, um, and they existed until the WEEK committee made recommendation, and that recommendation was adopted in 1973 to establish a new set of boards, and they're known as uh, FASB, the Financial Accounting Standard Board. And so, the, and so they consist of three separate entities, the Financial Accounting Foundation, which selects members of the, of the FASB board, Standards Board and funds their activities and exercises general oversight. The Financial Accounting Standards Board, its mission is to establish and improve standards of financial accounting and reporting. And the Financial Accounting Standard Advisory Council consults on major policy issues. And so FASB followed APB. And so FASB's mission to establish and improve standards of financial accounting and reporting. And so the differences between FASB and APB include smaller membership full-time non-voluntary membership, greater autonomy, increased independence, and broader representation. And so the FASB moved from 18 members under APB to seven. Um, they started paying the members that were on the board. They were previously all voluntary. The FASB only report to the Financial Accounting Foundation. They're free from any professional ties, the members and they're open to other members other than the CPAs. And so here you have FASB illustration, due process system of FASB. So topics are identified and placed on the board's agenda. Research and analysis conducted and preliminary views of pros and cons are issued. Public hearings on proposed standards are held. Exposure drafts, board evaluates research and public response and issues exposure drafts and then the board evaluates responses and changes exposure drafts if necessary and then you have your final standard issued here's gap and so the type of pronouncements uh, FASB created are the county standard updates and financial accounting concepts these are illustrations of both so learning objective three Explain the meaning of the general, generally accepted accounting principles, which we, I've mentioned a couple of times, and the role of the codification for GAAP. And so now we move into a more in-depth analysis of what GAAP is. And so generally accepted accounting principles. Principles that have a substantial authoritative support. Major sources of GAAP are, are FASB standards, interpretation of staff positions, APP opinions, AICPA accounting research bulletins, So FASB codification uh, came about September 15th in 2009. So gap varied in formats of completeness and structure, and it became difficult to determine what was authoritative. And so the goal in developing the codification is to provide in a one place all the authoritative literature related to a particular topic. So it creates one level of gap, which is considered authoritative. All other accounting literature is considered non-authoritative. And so FASB has developed the Financial Accounting Standards Board Codification Research System, CRS. The FASB's primary goal in developing codification is to provide in a one place all the authoritative literature related to a particular topic. And so basically what they're saying, we went over all the different boards before, the APB and um, 
the boards that, that, that were previous of them, everyone issued different types of opinions and statements and bulletins. And there used to be this hierarchy of what was more authoritative over something else. And so you had to know all these different governing bodies and you had to know who had more authority than someone else. And it was a very complicated um, task of, of trying to find out exactly how you were supposed to carry out accounting. And so in 2009, they came up with this system where they made one level authoritative, which was the information that's going to that's in the codification standards. And that was it. And it made it a lot easier. And so the codification is set up. Basically, um, this is the illustration of how it's set up. You have the topic, the subtopic, the section and the paragraph. And it will it looks as follows, like 310 is receivables. Then under you'll have 10 or 40, you have different numbers representing different topics all the way down to the section and then the paragraph form. And so here it relates, provides a, topics provide a collection of related guidance on given subjects such as receivables or leases. Subtopics are subsets of topics and distinguished by type of scope. For example, overall or troubled debt restructuring are two subtopics of receivables. And then you have sections indicate the type of content in a subtopic such an initial measurement in some cases subsections are used but not numbered and then paragraph this level is where you find the subst substantive content related to issues research all other levels exist essentially to find the material related to the paragraph level content and so this fast recodification framework um, is presented here to help you navigate down to the paragraph level of what you're looking for and so four, describe major challenges in the financial reporting environment. And so gap in a political environment. So gap is a major product of a political action as it is of careful logic or empirical findings. So here you have user groups that influence the formulation of accounting standards and are showing you all the different users, business entities, CPAs, AICPA, academia, academians, uh, investing public, industry, government, preparers and the financial community expectations of gap and so what the public thinks accountants should do versus what accountants think they can do and so the gap is difficult to close in light of accounting scandals and so you have Sarbanes-Oxley Act and the Public Accounting Oversight Board and so Sarbanes Oxley Act was passed in response to accounting scandals such as Enron, which the book mentions many times. And under um, SOX, you'll have uh, PCOB, which is the Public Accounting Oversight Board, and it was established. Um, it has oversight and authority for auditing and quality control, independent standards, and rule setting. And so other financial reporting challenges, non-financial measures, forward-looking information, soft assets, timeliness, and understandability. And so non-financial measurements are things that are difficult to measure like customer satisfaction. Forward-looking information is, is relating to accounting's uh, inability to provide present information since everything is historic. Soft assets are things like intangibles, which are not evaluated fully. Timeliness, uh, there's no real-time analysis. Um, information is provided quarterly and annually. And understandability, um, reporting can be very complex. And so the Internet and international accounting standards, there are two sets of standards accepted for international use, and that's the U.S. GAAP, which is issued by FASB, we already covered. And then the International Financial Reporting Standards, which are considered IFRS, and they're issued by the IASB. And so ethics in the envir environment of financial accounting. So in accounting, we frequently encounter e ethical dilemmas. GAP does not allow, that does not always provide an answer. And so you have to do the right thing. It's not always easy or obvious. And so IFRS, so relevant facts, similarities. So general accepted accounting principles gap 
for U.S. companies are developed by the Financial Accounting Standards Board, which is FASB. And FASB is a private organization. The SEC exercises oversight over the actions of FASB. The IASB is a private organization. Oversight of the actions of the ISB is regulated by, by the IOSCO. And so both the ISB and FASB have essentially the same governance structure. That is a foundation that provides oversight, a board, an advisory council, and interpretation committee. In addition, a general body that involves the public interest is part of the governance structure. The FASB relies on the SEC for regulation and enforcement of its standards. The ISB relies on the IOSCO for regulation and enforcement of its standards. Both the ISB and the FSB are working toward to find working together to find common grounds for convergence. A good example is a recent issue of a new standard on revenue recognition that both organizations support. Also, the boards are working together on other substantial projects such as accounting for leases. And so the differences gap is in more detailed and rules based, while offers tends to, to be simpler and more flexible in accounting and disclosure requirements. The difference in approach has resulted in the debate about the merits of principles based versus rules based standards. The difference between GAAP and IFRS should not be surprising because standard setters have developed standards in response to different user needs. In some countries, the primary users of financial statements are private investors. In others, the primary users are tax authorities, central government planners. In the United States, investors and creditors have driven accounting standard formulation. So the International Standards Setting Organization, the International Accounting Standards Board, the ISB, issues inter international financial reporting standards. The standards are used on most foreign exchanges. Standards are used by foreign companies listing on U.S. securities exchanges, and IFRS are used in more than 115 companies. The International Organization of Securities Commission, which before I mentioned as the IOSCO, does not set accounting standards. It's dedicated to ensuring that global markets can operate in an efficient and effective basis, very similar to our SEC. The International Accounting Standards Board, IASB, composed, is composed of four organizations. The International Accounting Standards Committee Foundation, which is similar to our Financial Accounting Foundation. The International Accounting Standards Board, which is similar to our Financial Accounting Standards Board. And the Standards Advisory Council, which is similar to our Financial Advisory Council. So the International Financial Reporting Interpretation Committee, which is the IFRC, is their fourth board fourth organization. And so here you have an illustration of their structure. So the international standard setting structure, you have the monitoring board, IFRS foundation, IFRS interpretation, the advisory council, the IASB, which is similar to our FASB, and then IFRS, the high quality, enforceable and global international financial reporting standards. So types of pronouncements, international finan financial reporting standards, framework for financial reporting, and international financial reporting interpretations. These are three different types of pronouncements they issue. So that brings us to the end of chapter one. Um, please reread chapter one. We will discuss this further on Thursday. Thank you.